Good morning. It's really see great to see the collision of different paradigms or principles like software or hardware. So today, I'd like to talk about uh, vision-driven research, which take advantage of the collision of conflicting, conflicting ideas or paradigms. I was in Milan last month with a bunch of my students to present the new piece called Transform. Transform is one of the examples to exemplify the collision and outhaven of different paradigms, in this case, design and technology. So first, I'd like to show the short video clip from Milan. We built 1,150 computer-controlled pins, fully computer-controlled software-controlled stuff but transform this into the medium of the artistic expression. Now you can see new materials, rabbit atoms dancing with old materials, red balls. So today, I'd like to talk the story behind all this research and design. Design versus technology is very important things because of tension and also conflicts. Milano, Milano Salone or Milano Design Weeks, all about design, means shy, frozen, static materials, box. The beauty of the surface, skin, but not the guts. There's no engine. So we try to make a collision bringing a new engine, computational engine, to make uh, tensions and outhaven. So I'm so delighted to be here because solid about software and hardware collisions. Also, we love art and science, the tensions and the opportunity. So we think a lot about power of transdisciplinary, finding opportunity in conflict between disciplines is very important strategies. Then we can really break down the walls, all the paradigms, to create a new archetype. So that's something we are trying to accomplish. The engine behind all this design or research is a vision, strictly vision-driven. What do you mean vision? Vision is not the technologies, or not the needs or killer applications. Many people are so fascinated by the technology, and of course, we do. We love and hate. But technology just means. Also, users' needs, you can study from user study, anthropological studies, very important, but never allow quantum leap or big jump. So we really care about the vision, like a Barnabas Bush mimics. This vision inspired my hero, Doug Engelbart, Ted Nelson, all these people. So the reason, one of the reasons why we care vision is the lifespan. You guys have the amazing machine today, but in two years, definitely in three years, all are going to landfills, even stream machines working, but your desire to get new machine are fired up by advertisement. Then everything goes to the landfill, get obsolete in one year. Application can be also disappear or replaced with other stuff. Think about the music. How many people still listen to the music with LP, CD, MP3, streaming? I know, 10 years later, let's ask the same question. But then everything disappearing. But the vision, like a Barney Babbage mimics, or Doug Engelbart about collective genes, never disappear. Even technology to materialize this vision changes. It lasts much longer our lifespan. That's the reason we take vision driven research very seriously. So this is a one-page summary of my battle against Pixel Empire. I've been fighting against Pixel Empire for 20 years, almost 20 years. Representation of information today is still pixel. Your computers, tablet, smartphone, everything is pixel behind the thick glass. It's intangible. 
You can't feel. You can't grab using body. No kinesthesia. You're not touching information, just touching the surface of touch screen. Like all the information, bottom of the waters. You can see through the surface, but you're never able to touch. So 18 years ago, I started the group, Tanjiro Media, pushing uh, information above the water called Tanjiro Bits. So people can directly manipulate and grab. But after 15 years, I realized that's not still good enough. Today, pixel dance. How many people write a program? How many people call the program? Good. You're king or queen or prince or princess. You can make pixel dance behind the computer screen, 2D screen. But the real materials, like a table or plastic, never dance, never transform. It's frozen, dead. So I really want to make atoms dance, transform. That's a crazy vision called radical atoms. So I'd like to go very quickly because, oh my gosh, just 11 minutes. So I care about the representation. How to represent idea information really matters. Because representation already affords fundamental mental operators. So beauty of Orari. How many people saw Orari? Real Orari. Great. Orari has amazing interface called handles. Handles waiting for you to grab your hands. Then once you start moving, you're part of the machine. Your nervous system, both uh, bone and muscle, telling you you're part of the system. No ambiguity about the synchrony. You fully understand why four seasons exist. So this impedance matching is completely missing current pixel empire, or GUI, or painted pixel. That's the battles I've started. So today, still under the water, digital, pixel. So I started tangible bits. But it's a very simple idea. Why don't we physically embody digital information and the computation so that you can use your hands directly manipulate, feel, computation? I published almost uh, 18 years ago called Tangible Bits. So that's the origin. Paper was almost rejected because so abstract. But there's one hero, Mark Weiser, on the committee, rescued. He's now part of the Ibicomp. So I really owe him a lot. So let me show the first application, which my first PhD is John Dacufra uh, implemented. To date and is again intended for professional use this time in the field of So this is for urban planning. So you can imagine this tabletop is a water level. Under the table, under the water, all the CAD models, computation models exist. But the tip of the iceberg means the physical model sticking out table so that you can directly manipulate and grab, of course. But you can use two hands. Kind of inverse clock can be you have two colleagues, four hands, space, space multiplex. The There's no ambiguity about grabbing and Here interacting. Also, you can change the time of the and day using a clock. Clock becomes now a controller. Left Every information sunlight. display Indeed, can be reverse controller. That's one of the ideas we're experimenting. Also, you can change the material from uh, bricks to grass. In Boston, most of the buildings are bricks, but here, shiny grass. And uh, also, you can explore a different space, like a uh, wind floor. How many people are making here? How many people love Navier Stokes equation? OK, we love it. It's beautiful. So basically, this is a wind simulation. But every time you grab the move the building, boundary condition changes. The new data are fed into the Simulators under the water, computational world, so that you can really explore the simulations using space multiplex, multi user, no ambiguity. These are the fake 3D, real 3D, and the real type. That's the power of tangible. But one problem is this physical model is frozen. It's never changed the form. I can't change the structure. I can't add more floor because it's frozen, dead materials. That's the limitation of tangible bits. Also, we tackle clay and sand. We love form giving. So using uh, sand and clay for landscape design, we designed a system called eliminating clay and sandscape. So this is an exhibit I did, uh, we did in the So we love Arcelotinka centers because they are in really intersection of the art, technology, and the society. So now you see the sandbox. You can sculpt. Then depending on the geometry, now it's a uh, Water drainage, you see the vector. Line shows the, uh, the vectors of the water going down. Also, color shows the speed. So while you're changing the shape from aesthetic point of view, 
computer also tell you about all the engineering aspect. So this sound is computational materials, not just display, but computational interface. However, this sound is also shy. They don't remember, remember the shape before it took. It's dumb. It's frozen. That sucks. That's the reason we started to go to the next endeavor called radical atoms. Why can't we make atoms remember and dance like a pixel dance today in a computer screen? So we started a shape display. Daniel Ratzinger did for the first master thesis. So let me show the one summary. So information now have a dual representation, pixel, but also physical. But they are synchronized strictly in real time. That's very important. You can render information on screen, but also physical manifestations. Then you can manipulate physical manifestation, tangible representation directly using your two hands or four hands. Now you see sculpting of information. Then you see immediately the result is fed back to the pixel and vice versa. So the new redefinition of rendering. Now you can also gesture, media gesture, like a G speak or a minor report. So you can use all the different language of interacting. So we're inventing new materials and interaction to give a new possibility for the artist or designer to express the idea and communicate. So after relief, we started the endeavor of making 1,000 pins based on a system called Inform. Let me show the video which became viral last November. How many people saw this video? Good, it's quiet. I think two million hits. But the important thing is, now you can really capture anything, including your body or artifact, but then they be physically embodied or remote space. This is totally different telepresence, not a video conference, or not a master slave robotics like a conference system, but totally new home representation. Also, intermaterial interaction. Red ball is ancient, old materials. White pin is a new dynamic material called radical atoms. So this is behind the scene. But the beauty is beyond the body. You can bring any instrument that you can really manipulate. So I hope you get the idea about a whole new world which new dancing materials may open to the world. So let me show the few highlights. So this is very important. Now, all the shine materials are being pushed by active materials. This is intermaterial interaction. That kind of new dimension, which nobody ever materialized before. And time is so short, so let me accelerate my life <laughs> a little bit. Also, you can do all the interesting uh, cattle design like work and the changing the form. But maybe this is most kind of clear example to showing about uh, potential. So now you have an iPad, you have all the digital data, but you can transfer. Because fundamentally, same things rendered both physical and digital. So it's not a two different things. Information, physically rendered and digitally under the water. So you can explore all the space. And so all the now, mathematical equation become tangible and real. You can put the ping pong ball, understand steepness. And it's crazy engineering. Uh, it took two years for us, try and error, putting all the 1,000 pins move in harmony. It's really crazy because we're MIT. But uh, now you see the beginning of very interesting artistic expression beyond the practicality. That's another important driving force. We went to the next stage called transform. So let me show the special video clip, I think first time we show to public, but we love Asia, we love structures, we love ball, it's a you, in a, trapped in a maze, but now you see the reality movement. Don't ask why, this is the art. <laughs> good, good. So, we went to further, how I can push this power of the expression and the communication are the new materials for the most creative peoples, like artists or designers. So I'd like to show the latest video clip. It's the first time to show to the public. 
So now you can see all the physical pain are dancing. You have a controls. You can write a code. You can choreograph. So this is a pattern, emulation of the beauty of the nature of the web. So stories, machines envy about the beauty of nature. They try to emulate, run, develop the algorithm. That's a story I told in Milano to 5,000 people. So now you see all the pin dancing. Today, designer have to choose one of two materials. Shy, frozen, static materials, like wood, metal, glass, plastic, whatever. Or dynamic materials, but intangible, stuck behind 2D screen. But these are third new materials, which give you the new possibility of dance with inert, passive materials, or whatever you can imagine. So these are white canvas waiting for the really creative people to come up with a new idea and meaning. I'm really thankful to the all the amazing students and the designer, engineer works day and night to really materialize this happens. So important message, transdisciplinaries, collision of different paradigm discipline is opportunities because they inform each other. If ideas are strong enough, you can translate into all the dimensions of art, design, science, technology. Transform into new dimension, our haven is something very, very important. But beyond that, if work is beautiful, it transmutes into the beyond preconceived expectation. Then it stick, inspire. Without the inspire, it doesn't really work. So future is not to predict, but to invent. This is a very important phrase that Alan K, our guru, uh, said many years ago. But the driving force of the invention is for me the vision. My hero, Doug Engelbart, came up with the idea of the collective intelligence. That's the most important. Not the mouse. Collective intelligence is the vision, most important contribution of Doug Engelbart. So vision is very important. We have to envision amazing, exciting futures. But also, we are builder. We have to build, embody, software, technology, whatever. We build it. But the building is not enough. Invent, artifact you design, build, have to inspire people. Otherwise, it never make any impact. So today, I really appreciate giving this opportunity to talk today here with you guys. So I have a plan. Uh, 2050, I'm going to a bit more higher altitude. In theory, uh, logically, it could be also negative space, depending on my, uh, I don't know, whatever. But the important, important message is, all together, 2100, all are gone. So, but that's at the end of the world. End of the future. Future continue to exist. Our descendant, our children, continue to living on this planet. So I'm asking every day to myself, my students. Also, I want to share with you, what do you want to leave for those living in 2200? If you are creator, builder, maker, how do you want to be remembered? So I want to be remembered by the visions that we talk today. So 2200 is a symbol of the future. Future never ends by your happy retirement or your death, but the continue, eternal future for which we all builders are responsible. Thank you very much for your kind attention.